Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies. In this episode, we're finishing up from a previous episode with part two of Building Modular Roads. If you haven't seen the previous episode yet, check it out right here. In the previous episode, I built and textured 12 6x5 road sections and put unique details on each of them. This was to keep the visual interest high. In this episode, we're going to finish the job by painting the sections, adding the landscape, and adding fun little details to it. Because there's so many pieces with this project, and because I decided to make each one unique, I decided to zoom in on two pieces of terrain in particular to give you specific examples of how I detailed them. And yes, this does include porta potties in 15 millimeter scale. So let's get to it. We pick up where we left off with our bases all undercoated, and I go ahead and put out some brown acrylic paint, just any kind, the cheap kind is fine for this. And grabbing a ratty brush, I get ready to dry brush it. I flick the brush back and forth, depositing just a hint of the pigment onto the grit on the bases itself, but steering clear of the road. Then I switch to a light tan dry brush on the base, and at this time I also put down some dark gray, followed by some light gray dry brushing on the rocks that are lying around the edges of the roads. Now it's time to start painting the individual bricks. And I do this by starting with some reddy brown tones, and then some beige tones, just switching it up using some of the color similar to what's on the base itself. I do some light grays and some dark grays, and I keep it random, scattering it all around the base. Once I've maybe got 10 or 15 percent of the individual bricks painted as distinctly different colors, I'm generally happy with each section, and then I move on to the next one. Once the various colors on the brick are done drying, I then go to an off-white and begin dry brushing the base again. I do the edges, but I also do lightly over the road itself. This is to give it a first level of highlight. I then move on to do the same thing with white, making sure to get the road, the edges lightly, and also the rocks. This coating creates a unity across the whole piece, so everything looks like it belongs together. Now, all this dry brushing does do a lot to tone down some of the contrast in the models. And in particular, the gaps between the bricks beca became fairly hard to notice. So at this point, I took out my MIG Dark Wash enamel, mixed it up with some extra thinner, maybe about 25% thinner to 75% wash, and then taking a really fine brush, went in and began redefining the areas between the bricks. Now I'm not gonna lie, this is not the most exciting part of this project, and it does take quite some time to line in this much work, even with enamels. Enamels will use capillary action to help you, and generally you would have to do less brush strokes than, say, if you were using a acrylic, but just the same, it still takes a while. Nevertheless, when it comes to establishing depth to really bring out texture in your terrain, you really can't get around lining in. So I just went to it, stayed patient, and in the end, the effect I thought looked really good. When the enamel wash had dried, I got out my metallic paints and dry brushed any metallic details, including the manhole covers in gunmetal. And then also using my Vallejo dry pigments, I took some dust colors, some dusty white and some ochre colors, and I carefully dry brushed them into the surface of the road. 
I worked them in really well to imply layers of dust on top of the bricks themselves. After the dry pigments, I switched to the wet pigments. So I put down some dust and dirt deposits on each section around the edges, a product I absolutely love. And then I switched to crusted rust on the manhole covers and any metallic objects on the base. And then after I'd set that on, I brushed some light rust in and around it to imply rust streaking. After the enamels had dried for about five minutes, I went back with some white spirits and went over some of the work, blending it into the edges and generally toning down the extreme nature of the effect. With the majority of the work done on the roads, it was now time to move ahead with the landscaping. And this varied from base to base because different bases had different features. But in most cases, I put down a layer of matte Mod Podge that had been watered down and sprinkled on some static grass. I also used white glue and glued down the odd grass tuft here and there on the base. And if you don't know this process, uh, I have a video on it, so I'll put a link up. I show you how to make your own grass tufts and how to install them. Then with the grass done, in various spots, I cut a hole in the surface of the board and after putting down some hot glue, pushed some trees into place. And I made these trees as well. I also have a video on how these were produced, so I'll also stick the link up. Uh, it's a very fast and effective way to build trees for your terrain. With the roads under control, it was now time to move on to some of the individual details. And each base had its own details. Here I'm working on the road sign just with some dark ink over some uh, white dry brush surface. But let's take a closer look at a couple specific examples. So I want to look at the section I put a culvert on and I want to look at a section I put Yes, a couple porta potties on. So let's start with the porta potties. I printed off the porta potties using my 3D printer. I found the file on Thingiverse. Then I gave them each a coat of NATO green with my airbrush, which I then followed up with a lighter coat of duck egg green. Followed by a quick dry brush where I mix some more white into the duck egg green. And then after hitting the model with some satin varnish and painting the roof white, I went ahead and lined it in with enamel. And I left the lining kind of messy intentionally because, you know, these are porta potties. Next, I hot glued the porta potties into place on the base and then mixing up a really unpleasant color of brown ink that I mixed with some green, I went ahead and painted on kind of a mess. When the ink had dried, I then went ahead and finished the landscaping and of course gave it a couple coats of matte varnish to protect it. And then I went back over the spills with some gloss varnish to help them stand out and look a little more realistic. For the culverts, I made them from this tubing that's used to guard cabling. Then I cut it to the right length and hot glued it in place and painted it with the rest of the model. Then to do the water effects, I took the same brown green ink mi mixture I used for the porta potties and I ran it into some of the crevices where I expected the water would run both above the culvert on the road and underneath the culvert itself. After everything had been sprayed with a matte varnish, I then went back and took some gloss varnish and painted over everything that was supposed to have the appearance of being water. So the porta potty section and the culvert section give you an example of how I applied some of the details to the bases. But as you know, I'm crazy about keeping everything really original and visually interesting for the viewer. 
so I continued to apply unique processes to each base. It really wouldn't be worth highlighting every one, but we used some wet effects and I used some extra pieces of sprue with items that I had scattered around just so that the viewer could stop and study each and every piece and see something different from every angle. And with that, I finished the project. I now had a series of roads that weren't boring to look at. They had plenty of detail, texture, and color, enough to hold the viewer's eye and to present some interesting opportunities for playing war games over. That's it for this episode. I hope you liked watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please stay tuned for new content twice weekly on Sundays and Thursdays. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is your source for regular model building, miniature painting, and diorama content. If you've not yet subscribed, make sure you do and press the bell button to receive immediate notification so you do not miss out. Miniature Landscape Hobbies has a Patreon account. If you'd like to partner with us to help us maintain our regular content, please consider subscribing to one of our supporter levels or make a one-time donation. Thanks for watching. Until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.